We're back. We got the band back together. We got a new victim, Project. Project. Our Project. 40 Buick has gone on to a new home, but they've given us custody of the 1936 Chevrolet panel truck that's been with Hemmings since the 1970s. If you remember the old brown covered Hemmings Motor News, there it is on the end, along with our Ford and our Dodge. Yep. So this truck is not stock. Not at all. It has been, at least since the 70s, it's had a Chevy 230 six cylinder, which is a later yep. generation of six cylinder engine. It's got a granny gear four speed out of a truck. It's got a 12 volt, 10 volt? 12 volt. 12 volt rear axle out bolt. of a truck. Yep. But it is still six lug everywhere. It is still uh, running. Aside from our lollipops here and our sealed beam conversion, it looks 30s. It's got the bias ply white walls and the artillery wheels. Yep. And we think that we can make this truck a driver again. It's been sitting a long, long time, just like the Buick, just like most of everything else in here. Yep. I think we determined probably 2003 Junior, right? Uh, stickers 2003, I think we tried to bring it to the race of gentlemen, but we had I some engine there. issues there, so we had to load it back up on the trailer. Yep. I tried to get it running. We have three dead cylinders. And you said that's a push rod issue, right? Three valves stuck, and it bent three of the push rods. So this motor could be saved, but for what we want to do, I say we kind of upgrade a little bit. Period, style. Yep modern comfort yep right keep yep. the vibe and stay away from your typical small block v8 right yeah we'll use I, street rod parts here but this is not a street rod it is a road ready classic yes absolutely yep possibility of air conditioning it can get real hot i think we can do that awesome. yeah you see we talked about a backup camera as well that probably wouldn't hurt. As you can see, those, <laughs> those <laughs> little windows. windows don't allow for <laughs> a much view. So yeah, we can just do some creature comfort upgrades and still yeah. keep it 1936. I awesome. can't wait. When do we start? Right now. Let's get it over on the lift. And like everything in here that's been sitting forever, got to start with the fuel tank. Can't go that's anywhere without a good gift. Yeah. Yep. All right. Exactly. All right, let's, let's get her going. into the tank we go. Going in. This looks like a scene from Expedition Unknown. Oh, that's kind of rusty looking. What are those bubbles? Rust. Oh. That is rust. So we're definitely gonna have to clean this thing out. Oh, that's better. Wow. Oh, that's nasty. This is why you don't leave your car parked with a full tank of gas for 20 years or any gas in it. See if we can get this old copper line undone. Oh yeah. All right, excellent. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Incoming. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good Rock. call, Dave. Cool. Good call. Good deal. Yeah. So look at that. That threads right into that little bracket there, and that's what holds that on. Amazing. I learned something new. Yeah. Good, eye good eyeball, Dave. What do you think? You should come out. About that. Would you just look at it? Oh, that's fantastic. I never, never seen anything like that before. So this is where the bolt went through and then bolts the neck on and then there's an O-ring seal that goes right there. It's just not something I've ever seen before. Though working on 36 Chevy panels has not been... That's uh, a big No. If you were curious, here's yeah. how it works. So the bolt goes through there and connects it there, and we've got this rubber seal. Had a rubber Had seal. A rubber seal. <laughs> I acquired a cement mixer 
I got some media from your local supply store. Put in about 10 pounds of this uh, tumbler media, threw it in the cement mixer and walked away from it. And come to find out, this tank had already been lined inside. And this stuff is just a mess. Um, so basically two and a half days of the tumbling with just the media cleaned this up it's beautiful inside. So this tank has already been lined. It's been through a lot. It's been patched. I don't have a lot of hope, but we've had really good luck with the POR product. So we're going to use their fuel tank repair kit and we're going to seal it up and see how it does. All right. Destructions. I am going to plug the holes again. We're going to mix one to one, one quart of cleaner degreaser with one quart of warm water. Pour that right in. I have already pressure washed this and inside and outside. So along with this degreaser, it should be nice and clean inside. So rinse this out several times, got it all nice and clean. Now we're going to add our metal prep. But before you do that, you want to make sure you get the majority of the water out. It's okay if it's wet inside, but you can't have a lot of water. You'll dilute the metal prep and it's just not good. So I'm going to pour this right in. Now the instruction is it tells you to leave it pretty much on each side for about a half hour. But since I got the convenience here of the mixer, I'm just going to turn that on for a little bit and slosh that all around. Then I'll pull it out and let it sit on each end for a half hour. And we'll be out that for a while. We'll, we'll bring you back in about a second. So I rinsed out the metal prep and for the next process of doing the lining we actually have to have it very dry inside the tank. You don't want any moisture. So I'm going to use a shop vac and put the exhaust side into the tank. Whoops. We'll let that sit for probably an hour, hour and a half and dry out the inside of the tank which you have to do before you put the liner in. The one thing you don't want to do is use shop air or unless you have a very good oil separator in it because you don't want to pump any oil from your air compressor into the tank. Then the, the liner will not work. So you have to dry it. A hair dryer will work, shop vac. Just don't use oily shop air. We'll let that sit for about an hour and give it a check. Got it all dried out inside. It's actually really cold outside, so I actually hit it a little bit with a heat gun just to warm it up inside. I've got my pickup plugged with a eighth inch plug. I've got my drain plugged, got my sending unit plugged, and I'm going to pour it right in the filler neck here. And per directions, you have to mix this really well. Um, and I've experienced with a lot of the POR products are very high in solids and pigment. So we're going to give it the good old mix. There it is. Oh, this is going to make a mess. Oh, I know this is going to make a mess. Get some rags here. Flows just like paint. Look at that. All right, got that in there. And now 
basically just do the slow shuffle back and forth, try and line every little square inch inside. Back and forth. Try and get every corner. Once you're done with that, pour all the excess out. And because the pickup tube for this just goes through the side of the tank, I'll let it dry for a couple hours, give it a blast of air just to make sure the pickup tube doesn't get plugged. And then we let it sit for 96 hours or four days for metric guys. So we're just gonna drain out the excess here. I will have to chase the threads later once this sets up. Like I said, it's just, this has to sit for 96 hours, four days for our metric friends. And we'll put some and after photos here once it's dried. And then we should be good to go. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below. As always, thank you for watching.